What's up guys? So I was planning my next imaging session, the Iris Nebula, which last night I took some frames and, you know, set up everything. It's been a while since I've imaged, you know, it's been almost two months with my EQ6R Pro. And so, you know, you assume everything's lined up as it should be, good to go, set it up had the dithering set up and I've never really paid a whole lot of attention to the dither settings and that's what I want to go over today because I, I had it set to dither in APT and of course it was active in uh, PHD2 but when I went back and checked this out and reviewed these frames the dither scale was so small it just did not it didn't make a noticeable dither so I wound up with 78 subs that are pretty much useless i mean you can stretch them a little bit and get an okay barely okay result but you know what i learned something from this it just goes to show how important dithering is when you're imaging there's this really awesome site i came across who i think explains this pretty well so this is the site i was talking about my astro science by sergio kaminsky i just happened to come across this guy's site just trying to get some more details and tips on how to better maximize dithering and he has got a great uh, page here on calculate dithering scale and PhD and this lays out for you what settings you should use in APT and what settings you need to use in PhD so I'm going to show you a little thing that I typed up, but it's basically using this formula here. So all, all this, uh, this is not my, this is not my calculator. This isn't something I created. This is full credit goes to Sergio Kaminsky on this. So, uh, but it, it's pretty awesome. So that's what I used, and this is how you get to his site. Really like how he laid out um, calculating the image scale of both your main camera, guide camera, and main scope and guide scope and using that to determine help you to help you determine what settings you should use for dithering when you're setting that up in PHD2 or in APT. So when I get a chance to image tomorrow night and the, the sky is supposed to be clear, hopefully, good Lord willing, and uh, we'll put this to the test, but I believe I should be able to get a much better result, much better result with my dithering. And here's to some clear skies so I can finish this video for this week. <laughs> okay, so as I mentioned earlier, I was going for a night number two to get some better dithered frames of the Iris Nebula. Now, as luck would have it, I fought clouds off and on for about five, six hours and managed to get three subframes <laughs> now i'll say this though and and i was shocked to i knew the dithering how good dithering is and how much it helps but i was shocked to see that even though i was only able to get three dithered frames now these were heavily dithered and i'm going to go into detail here how i calculated my dither scale and i think this is going to be a game changer for me um if if i can get away with doing 20 30 frames maybe even less with this heavy of a dithering, I may not have to do, I mean, this may eliminate having to use calibration frames altogether. Um, I know Tony Hallis is a, a big supporter of good signal, good data, and as long as you've got that with heavy dithering, he doesn't even bother with calibration frames. And if you look at his work, you'll see the man knows what he's talking about. He's doing something right. Because he's got some fantastic images so I'm, I'm using that mindset here but now while I can't give you a, a sub to sub comparison but this is still I think gonna be a pretty powerful uh, comparison on 76 subframes that weren't dithered and three that were and I think you're gonna be surprised at the results here uh, both images obviously could use some more integration time but I think when you compare the noise levels here, you're going to be surprised to see which one actually came out with much lower noise. So let's go ahead and jump on the computer here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is something I typed up in WordPad just to give you an example. So the guide scope I'm using is an ASI 120 Mini Mono, as you can see here. And that is, you know, very common guide camera. 
and it has a um, pixel scale 3.22 arc seconds per pixel the Canon 77D pixel scale with the telescope that I'm using is 2.28 arc seconds per pixel. Now, you calculate this, uh, Stellarium will do it for you, but if you put in the pixel size of this camera, which I believe is 3.75 microns is the pixel size, and pair that up with the focal length of the guide scope you're using, that'll give you this number here, okay? And you can do that directly in Stellarium. Uh, under settings or you can use that calculator on the other site calculating your your pixel scale and I'll show you that same thing with the Canon 77D pixel scale uh, pixel pitch I think it is 3.79 divided by the 336 focal length There's, you come out to 2.28 2 you get 2.28 arc seconds per pixel with the Canon 77D and the 71 GT that I was using. So, to figure your dither scale, you take those two numbers, one of the guide camera divided by the imaging camera, and this gives you a factor of 1.4. So, a, a good aggressive dither, he recommended, is about 30 pixels. Okay, And in order to get that, I have to take that factor, divide that by the 30, and that gives me 21. So, stay with me here, okay? Uh, hang in there. So, in order to get at least close to this number, in APT, I gotta set that dither level to five, which corresponds to uh, 500 microsecond pulse, but five, and then, then PHD to four, and that gets me to 20, which is pretty close to that 21. So that's the calculation. If you're going for a 30 pixel scale, uh, 30 pixel movement, that's the scale you would use based on these numbers that you calculate so I hope that makes sense it's it really is an important piece to figuring this out but uh, you'll see here in the results how much of a difference this has made it prior to doing this I did not know how to do this I did not know this was even a thing so you learn something new so let's get back to Photoshop where I can actually show you the differences here so this this image here, believe it or not, now I know it's a little bit brighter because um, I was trying to brighten it up a little bit <laughs> just to make it look a little better. But I really I did the same same number of stretches, same corrections in camera raw filter, same uh, light pollution removal, the same processes in each each image. And this one here, guys, believe it or not, and you you know there's not a whole lot of detail here. I was able to pull out the star colors okay, but you know that's that's not the concern. But if you look, the noise on this, and I've did two rounds of noise reduction, is just horrendous. I mean, it just destroys the the SNR, the signal to noise ratio on this thing. And this was using pretty aggressive noise reduction. This is 76 frames undithered, stacked with uh, bias frames, 100 bias frames calibrated in, and you still get. It's a pretty poor signal. This, on the other hand, is just three. Just three, guys. I mean, look, look at look at this. Just look at the difference here in the noise level between the two. Look how much cleaner that is. Three dithered frames stacked with the same number of calibra calibration frames. Now, the I didn't do the three on purpose. That's just because I could not get any more data. It was... The uh, weather's just not been behaving here lately. But, I mean, you can even make out more of the dust lanes here. I know there's so much more here. I'd love to get about six to eight hours, six to eight hours dithered. And I think this image is going to be fantastic. So hopefully, hopefully in the next week or two I can get a chance to get that. But I'm just blown away by the noise level difference. So, yeah, I mean, just it's <laughs> proofs in the picture. I mean, the... I always knew dithering helped, but I until I did this, I didn't realize how much of a difference, especially when done properly, it helps. And, you know, prior to this evening, uh, running into this, I never really paid much attention to dithering scale. Uh, it just wasn't something I fully understood, and I felt like I was getting good results from previous images anyway, so this is not really something I've looked into, but I, th I think this is going to just revolutionize the quality of my photos coming up here so I'd strongly recommend using 
using this technique to determine your dither scale. But let's take a look at that uh, website again. By Sergio Kaminsky. Let's see here under tutorials. And he explains this pretty well. Just go to this site, guys. Read through this. Plug in your numbers. If you need to calculate your um, your image scale, just type in image scale calculator, okay? And you can plug it in right here. Pixel size, like I knew that mini mono was 3.75. The focal length of the guide scope was 240. And it's something like 1280 by 760 pixels. Calculate, there it is. That's your image scale. That's that 3.223. And then you want to calculate that. Let's go back to my notes, notepad. So you want to take that. That's your arc seconds per pixel for the guide scope setup. And you want to take that and divide it by the arc seconds per pixel for your main imaging camera setup. Okay. So same thing there. If I go back to this calculator, I know the 77D, I think is 3.79. The reduced GT71 is 336. And it's something like 6400 by 4000 pixels yeah it's close enough it but there you go so there's that number that's how you come up with those numbers plug those into these calculators here and that's going to give you your factor to use to move 30 pixels and you could go more aggressive I mean you could go probably 40 pixels on this I think 30 is going to do just fine uh, that that cleaned it up so that cleaned up that image tremendously I couldn't believe how much cleaner just three dithered frames was compared to 76 undithered frames. So there is some serious power to dithering, guys. Well, y'all, that's that's pretty much it here. I mean, there's not really a glorious end shot here to show you as this one to me. I mean, it's okay, but it's it it just needs more data. I mean, this is 20 minutes of data. So, you know, another three, three four, five hours of data um, I'll be sure to do a follow-up and show you what that looks like, but I'm, I'm pretty excited at the potential uh, I'm going to have here with this. Well, guys, that pretty much concludes the video. If you've got any questions regarding astrophotography, please feel free to shoot me some questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, also, if you're interested in any of the gear that I use or recommend, please check out the links I have below. There's some very useful stuff there that'll help get you started on the right foot. As well, I'm going to be putting a couple links here in the video uh, on video pro image processing. Uh, if you want to know, have a better understanding of my workflow, I'll post some of my more popular videos that go into very good detail on how I how my workflow works and how I get the results that I do. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. God bless. Keep on seeking. Keep looking up. And until next time, clear skies.